All right, mates, welcome back. It's been a minute. Hope everybody's doing well. We're going to do a recap here of our Fantasy Picks Lake Gunnersville Bassmaster Lake Gunnersville event. First stop of the year, 234 anglers fish the event down Scottsboro, Alabama, Lake Gunnersville, registering 1,559 bass uh, over the two-day event. Remember, bass events, two days events now. Um, first off, big shout out to our regional anglers. Obviously, Greg De Palma, New Jersey, won the event, Bass Elite Pro. Okay, we'll get into that in a um in a hot minute. But big shout outs to uh Greg Harper, um William Crockett from Maryland, uh Jacob Eskins, uh Jason Henry, all these guys finished in the top fifty, maybe forty five, top fifty four. And a big shout out to Jason Largan um from Virginia who finished in um seventy second over the uh two day event. Now, our fantasy picks, man, I was like, kind of went with some local guys, kind of went with some maybe unknown guys. I know I got, got ribbed a couple by people asking me why I didn't go with some of these names, big names, you know, other than Greg, of course. I didn't pick Greg DePaul because I figured, hey, you know, what's the likelihood a guy's going to win? I guess Hobie had this last year with Fred's son um, down south. What's the likelihood you put somebody in a kayak for two two days before a uh, major kayak fishing event and they win it right well that's what happened again um again down at gunnersville but so greg new jersey um obviously and then um our picks or fantasy picks man after day one it looks pretty good right i think a lot of people um figure this out um you know day two drop off for a lot of people um which is kind of, it happens kind of interesting these things these two day events are just harsh on uh, people that don't have things dialed in with multiple spots, I guess. Plus, you also have to figure out, you're not seeing this on TV, um, but there were a lot of boats on the water. It's Gunnersville. There were a lot of boats. So when you hear reports from a lot of guys, they were around a lot of boats, plus a lot of a lot of other kayakers on, you know, in day one and then day two. They had a bad weather pattern too, warm warm come in before that event too as well, which probably impacted a lot of things. But it's just saying, so it's Gunnersville, okay? It's a unique place. You know, there's a few around, but like just loaded up. Tournaments there all the time. So we had Josh Stewart was in our fantasy pick. He finished um, 17th. Um, Randall Wallace finished 34th. Davis fin- Mark Davis finished 38th. Jordan Marshall 39th. Ewing Minor 57th. Um, so those were the picks. Um, you know, and of course some of the, 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 the staples... You know, that I mentioned when I did the pick video, that like there were some hitters, man, there's some hammers in this tournament. I mean, this bass showed out in this tournament. Like, bass is on a checkered past when it comes to kayak fishing. I don't think I'm going out on a limb saying that. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying, you know, like up here, for example, the last bass elite pro that I'm aware of, or maybe any professional um angler from a boat, to win a kayak major kayak fishing event was Mike Iconelli on the Upper Bay in in the Bassmaster Series. I think it was in August of um, 2021. They only had 41 anglers in it. So think about that. 41 anglers a year plus ago, two years ago, almost two years ago, to now 234 for its first event in 2023. That's a huge leap for an organization that's taken a lot of heat for not for kind of having get back, you know, kayak being an afterthought. Um, so Ky- Bassmaster's new director now, Steve Owens. So I mean, th- their their trajectory now seems to be, you know, where it needs to be for something as reputable as bass. Okay, um, to get up there uh, to challenge these other trails and, and ultimately to be at the top. It's bass. I mean, especially now if you're going to have a lot of crossover. Between elite anglers and open anglers and, okay, um, coming into kayak fishing to cash these checks, okay? Um, so that was that fantasy. We did not, you know, we did definitely, definitely did good, uh, you know, in terms of the day one. Um, big, big time drop-offs in day two. And those people that stay consistent, they're the ones who finished at the top. What's interesting, I'm going to make an observation here. I may take some heat, but that's okay. I'm a big boy. Um, y'all notice what's happened in 2023? I mean, throw Greg out. I mean, it's his first kayak event. 
But I mean, go go back and look last year at AOIs for Bassmaster, AOI for Hobie. I don't know if KBF has AOI, but they're top anglers. Go back and look and see who was winning events last year. And then go and look at this year. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. Because they're been down south, they're in Florida, now Hobie's going to Caddo. These are these are big time bass factories early in a year, and a lot of people don't really get to their strengths until March, April, May, you know, kind of and into the early summer. But I'm gonna make the observation. I think these rules changes have totally shaken up the kayak fishing world. People that you're normally seeing in the top five, top ten are not there. They're not there. Now, there could be other reasons for that. It may not be rules changes, but we're going to see going forward if it directly impacts those anglers that are used to fishing a certain way, launching at a certain place, fishing these creeks, fishing these things way up, all of these things now that have been addressed with boundary changes. Is that now going to bring more quote-unquote parity to kayak fishing? I don't know. But if you just look at Florida for Hobie, Florida for KBF, okay, now Bass and Florida, um, Lake Murray, Lake Murray for KBF, okay, a lot of guys are one just getting better, and two, I think the rules changes are 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 are, are causing a little bit of people have got to figure out a new way. Some of these people that were used to kind of taking advantage, some would say taking advantage. I would say within the rules, um, it's better that the rules are more specific. Um, but it's just interesting to say. So I'm just throwing that out there. Pay attention to that. Look at last year's anglers to this year's. There are a lot of new names in this list, mates. There are a lot of new names in that Hobie list and that KBF Lake Murray um, result list. And a lot of guys that were finishing 30, 40, 50, 60 and back now moving all the way up. And so just saying. Um Another shout out, Casey Wallace, Bud down in, uh, down south, was leading this day one, and then he did not um, have as good a day on day two, um, and I think he dropped a seventh. Um, but shout out, he's been putting in the work and them local trials down in Georgia and Alabama and all that. Um, been watching him now for uh, almost two years. It's great to see that happen, that progression for people. Um so let's talk Gunnersville, Lake Gunnersville. Let's talk Greg DeBum, Millville, New Jersey. A lot of us know Greg from Susquehanna Fishing Tackle, Columbia, Pennsylvania. Okay, probably bumped into him there if you're in the re- if you're in Pennsylvania, Maryland. I think they have another actual seminar this weekend coming up. Um, believe it or not, you can check that out on Susquehanna Fishing Tackle on Facebook or on, or on their website. Um, great little place. Um, and um, most people kind of affiliate. Greg with that, at least that I know. Smallmouth guys, we kind of affiliate Greg with Susquehanna, not really probably his other sponsors, like probably Shimano or some other people. Um, so, like I said before, from Millville, New Jersey, let's do a little bit of background check. He, a background check, sorry. A little bit of background, sorry, Greg. Um, he has had 88 tournament appearances for Bass, as in Bass Master, okay? B, capital B-A-S-S. And I guess one now kayak event which he just won. He said one classic appearance. Now, knucklehead that I am didn't dig deeper and correlate the fact that Greg De Palma's one classic appearance in 2020 was on Gunnersville. Okay? So, knucklehead for that, for not having a fantasy pick. Okay? But, there you have it. I think he finished 23rd, if I'm not mistaken. Um... In that 2020 Bassmaster Classic uh, event. 54 times the mate has been in the money to Bass Elite Series. 54 times um, in events. Three top 10 finishes. 14 top 20 finishes. 20 top 30 finishes. He has caught 2,320 pounds. 13 ounces of bass in his four-year professional career with earnings of $300,000. Now, it could be $306,000. I think it was $6,000 was the maybe it was more. Um for the payout for bass. Somehow 
comment in the comments if you know what the exact amount was. I don't know why, why six is hitting in my head. Um, but with 234 anglers, I think it's 250 bucks a pop for a two-day event. I could be wrong. It could be higher than that. But anyway, add that to his career <laughs> career winnings, right? Um, so, I mean, just awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, what could Bassmaster want more to elevate its kayak trail than to have an Elite Series Pro come in like Greg? Okay, good guy, sense of humor, like fun, just a just a good, approachable guy. Okay, no chip on his shoulder, probably except when he gets in the boat because <laughs> um, he fishes hard. Um, but you know what? I mean, marketing. What? What? I mean, what better? Um, you know, what better? Uh, can you have for the opening event for? For, for Bassmaster, to highlight Lake Gunnersville, a event that Bass knows very well, uh, a lake that Bass knows very well, has had lots of events there. Um, so, kudos to Bass. So, Greg fished out of, for all those who asked those questions on the other day, on uh, after the stream, um, he fished out of an Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 136. Old Town, they reckon it, boys. Old Town Anglers. Have been wrecking it in 2023. They just have. Uh, Casey Casey Reed comes to mind from Virginia. Um, I mean, Old Town had a bunch of guys finish at Murray and down in Florida. They they just they're just they're just throwing it down um, so far this year. Um, so kudos to them. Um, it appears as though some of the things are coming in from a lot of guys that I follow for Lake Gunnersville that you basically had a few patterns working on Lake Gunnersville. You had the pre-spawning bite, which is what Greg um, reportedly focused on on the flats. Um, it's reported that Greg was fishing um, a spot that he'd known well um, from previously fishing on Gunnersville, um, but also took advantage of some lunar full moon aspects, took, you know, Grass, milfoil, hydrilla. Um, I'm going to do a video um, and break down the bait, um, the lipless crankbait. I'm going to actually share, I'll comment, but I'll share an actual great video um, that breaks down the lipless crankbait used by Greg De Palma um, on Gunnersville that he designed. Um, it's a pretty fascinating crank. I'm going to speak to my people. If you're fishing on the upper bay and that you plan on coming to KBF in late April uh, on Tidal Potomac, you want to pay attention to that video, okay? Um, because that's going to be prime, prime lipless crankbait time in them creeks, okay? Mild winter. Very mild winter here, mates. Okay, for those, all of you who are coming to KBF uh, Potomac River, I know there's a Hobie Seminole event the same weekend, so hey man, perfect opportunity if you've never fished one of them KBF events, hey man, to get in there because a lot of guys are going to be down at the Hobie. Okay, just throwing that out there. Um, mild winter, see what's going to happen with the spawn. People are people are catching some biggins right now, not quantity, just quality bass right now as they're still staging out in the channels and in the mouths. I haven't worked their way back up in a lot of the creeks yet. But, hey, it's eight weeks away. Um, You know, weather here, friggin' 38 degrees again, 38 to 40 degrees in the morning, and then it gets to be 50, 55 in the afternoon. That's the weather we're looking at here. Looks like they had some crazy weather down in Lake Gunnersville with that storm system that rolled in, I guess, the week before. Um, but it looks like the pattern was, for some guys, was a pre-spawn pattern, um, getting staging fish on flats. Um, in up to like six to eight feet of water, um, in hydrella, in midfoil, and then other guys were on a spawning pattern where they were actually targeting fish that were in, back up, ready to spawn, have, I guess, could have spawned or about to spawn. Um, so it's really the two things that I'm hearing out of Gunnersville, that event in terms of the patterns. Uh, I'm sure more will come out. It's still early that, you know, most guys are just now getting back home yesterday, last night, and haven't really done their recaps yet. I um, really look forward to a couple of guys. I always like Jordan Marshall does a great job with these recaps. Um, and, you know, of what, what was actually going down. We don't get these live stream feeds. Some guys are probably doing them on their own channels. 
But we don't really get the live stream feeds and all that like we get from the boater side um, for these bass events. Hopefully, they're going to move to that. Um, put some cameras out on the water um, and get that stuff out there so people can, you know, just see it. I'm not saying that people are going to tune in and watch eight hours of people fishing. A lot of people aren't even tuning in to watch the Bass Elite's freaking live scope, okay, anymore because it just gets kind of, you know, people want to see highlights. People want to see that. But, you know, if they did a stream and then you could watch the stream later on and they basically timed out on the timeline when the when the when the, when the the good stuff the juice goes down um that'd be pretty cool they got the money <laughs> you know I'll, I'll spend bass's money they got the money um but that's it you know that's 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 like gunnersville you know kudos to greg and making that transition uh, you know and he did announce from what i understand at the award ceremony that he plans on fishing a few more um events this year so look out Susquehanna because bass is coming to Susquehanna. Remember Hobie is not coming to Susquehanna for the first time in the last two or three years. It is going to the new river. Okay. In West Virginia, which is a crazy sick fishery that no one really talks about on a big national scene because national professional angling competitions, looking at you, MLF, looking at you, bass, um, don't go there, okay? Don't go there, all right? Um, it's crazy. They don't go to Susquehanna either, um, but I'm just telling you, it, it, that fishery is, got. if you look right now, guys are catching 2021s and 22s right now. It's freaking early, late February, early March, okay? I'm just telling you. We got a couple other rivers nobody talks about either, and we're going to get into that this season a lot um, because it's just ridiculous that, you know, they don't get any coverage. And the reason why they don't get any coverage, mates, is because the pros aren't fishing there. Why does everybody know Gunnersville? Because the pros fish there on both circuits all the time, every year, continually, every year. Okay? It just gets ingrained in us growing up. We know these lakes by name, just like we know the anglers. Okay? It's because these have, they schedule these events. It's good to see Hobie making that left-hand turn to an opportunity. Uh, and then for Bass to go ahead and schedule, I don't think they've ever fished the Susquehanna. So, again, for Bass to go in there, um, plus you've got the um, No Limit Big Bass Power Hour Native Watercraft <laughs> event in August on Susquehanna. So, maybe Greg wants to enter that. <laughs> maybe you want to compete against Greg on an hour-hourly basis because I know he knows the Susquehanna. Okay? Um... So, it'll be interesting to see. But Greg finished with 93.75 inches on day one and 96. He led day two. 96 on day two for 109.75 inches. Ow. Okay. That 96 is something to think about because a lot of people dropped on Sunday. Okay. Greg increased... His length by almost, what, three inches? Two and a half inches? Um, and so, while a lot of guys actually came in much lower on Sunday. So, I don't know what happened. The moon came out, I think, Saturday night. It was a full moon, I think. Um, I know we got onto some fish here. Um, you know, late Saturday and, and Sunday morning, a lot of people did. So, you know, before we got some rain. So, I, you know... I don't know how, whether that fact is too much of a factor or not, um, but big shout out. Congratulations, Greg De Palma from New Jersey in our region. Our region right now is doing pretty darn well. We catch a lot of crap um, from people um, about Northeast anglers and Mid-Atlantic anglers. And But Casey Reed went down there, won on uh, – Casey Reed won, I think um, – Casey Reed's won an event. Rich Biggie won an event one of the days, I think, uh, on uh, Trail Stop 2, I think, on uh, Lake Murray. Um, I think he won. Um, oh, no, he didn't win. Casey won. But Rich finished in the top five or five ten, whatever. Um, so we got guys, that, guys, you know, that are just making the trip. They're traveling. They're doing the work, putting in the work, and they're winning. 
Um, or they're finishing in the top 20, 25, top 30. That's a lot. I mean, you look, that's top 20 finishes with these guys. You look at this, look at this, look at this roster. Okay. Registrations, 234 anglers in this Bassmaster event. I don't care who you are. You finish in the top 30 in this group, you showed out. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Don't let anybody, don't put your head down. Don't let anybody tell you that, oh, well, you know, whatever. Be positive. Keep your head up. Keep fishing because, man, that's something. There were some hammers in this group, okay? Um, and I fully expected to continue um, with Bat- Bass and Hobie. Um, you know, we're going to see what happens. I think Hobie's on Caddo, I think, this Saturday. Um, always a lake that shows out. Um, so we will see what happens. But that is Lake Gunnersville. Uh, fantasy, big kudos to Josh, Randall, Mark, Jordan, Ewing. Um, you guys are really, you know... Still showed out, finishing in the top, you know, top fifth, top third, top forty, and top sixty. Um, in that range, top twenty, top forty, top sixty. Um, in that range. Um, so congratulations to those guys. Um, I know they'll get back to work. Uh, for the next event, I will do a video breakdown on the lipless crankbait. Um, from Greg De Palma, designed by Greg De Palma. Um. Not sure I need to make a call here. I'll make a call here in about an hour or so up to Susquehanna. I'm not sure that Susquehanna Fishing Tackle may have it in stock or not. Um, just because the last time I was in there, don't remember seeing it. Um, the brain, I don't remember seeing it. Um, but, you know, you can, Safe Bet Tackle Warehouse has it. Um, and so we'll break it down. I'll show the video um, in terms of the specs. And then talk about how that bait applies to our region, applies to the Potomac, our river systems, our upper bay, our tribs, all that stuff in the springtime coming out. Um, Because we all know you're going to have a lipless crankbait tied on. You just are. Or you should. Um, And this particular bait, I actually am really, really impressed with. Because, a little sneak peek. I actually think they've taken the jerk bait weight transfer system. Okay. If you know, if you fish jerk baits, you know what I'm talking about. And some of the top line jerk baits have that weight transfer balancing system in your jerk bait um, to a lipless crankbait. And if you see this thing in the water, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, because there's something to be said for a lipless crankbait that swims on the sink, okay? Right? And then it tracks when you're burning it. And it stays. Think crankbait. What we talk about when we talk about square bills and tight wobbles, right? You hear that a lot. Okay? The action um, and the thump. Of like certain cr- knockers and a crank and knockers in any crankbait. Most of the time, we hear that about square bills. We don't really hear that much about lipless. Although all the lipless custom liplesses I focus on on my channel, most of them have a knocker and a rattle. Okay, or they just have rattles. Or then you have the silent running lipless crankbait with no knocker, no thump, <laughs> like and no and no ball bearings. Okay. So there's a lot out there. So we're going to break that down in a video. I'll put that together. See if I can find the video that I remember seeing months and months and months ago um, about the bait. And if I can share that on a stream um, for you guys to watch the design of this and and all all the technical aspects of it. It's out there. I just got to find it. Um, And I'll put that video together hopefully today or, or tomorrow. And you guys can get in the know. Because I know you guys are thinking, okay, Jay, when's that video coming out? When's that red crawl, lipless crankbait myth video coming out? It's coming out this week. Um, Because everybody wants to be tying on a red crankbait um, in March. Okay? I've not seen a single crawl in my river yet. All right? So that tells you they're still in the mud. So they haven't broke yet. I'll be out on the river again this year, just like last year. And be able to do the whole video on, you can see what I'm talking about with the crawl coming out of the mud in a couple areas that I know on the upper Potomac and the Allegheny and places like that that just this is where they live. 
okay? And you can just watch them by literally the dozens moving out, okay? And coming to life. It's pretty cool. Um, if you're a river, if you're a river rat, it's pretty cool. And you fish for smallies. All right, mate. So Marner's doing well. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Always comment. Always reach out to me. Any news, any news you got in the kayak fishing world, hit me up. Yes, I'm aware of the drama in the KFL, the former KFL. I will be covering that this week as well. Um, shout out to all those that have hit me up and sent me info, as much info you know that they want to share. Any other news in the kayak world? Any trail that you want to get featured? Any custom bait that you want to get featured? Hit me up. All right, mates.